Welcome to Revised Chemistry with Mr. B. If you're struggling to balance simple equations, I'll show you a few simple steps that should help you out. So the first one is that a rule that we mustn't break, and that is we do not change the small numbers in formulas. So in this case, we can't change the little two or the four. What we can do, rule number two, is we put big numbers in front of a formula to multiply that formula. So for example, 2H2O means we've got two molecules of H2O. 3CO2 means we've got three molecules of CO2. Let's look at an example. The first thing we do is we write down the number of each atom on each side. So we've got one Mg on the left, one Mg on the right, 1H on the left, 2H is on the right, 1Cl on the left, and 2Cls on the right. So we need to do some balancing. So the first thing we do is we need to get the H's correct. So we put a big two in front of HCl, and that gives us two H's. But you'll notice it's changed the Cl's as well because it's multiplied HCl. So we've got two H's on the left and now we've got two CL's on the left as well, but that's okay because that's what we needed. So if we do a final check, one MG on each side, two H's on each side, two CL's on each side. So that one is now correct. Let's have a look at example two. So we start off the same way, writing down how many of each type of atom on each side. So we've got one NA on the left and two NA's on the right two O's on the left and one O on the right. So the first thing we'll do is try and balance the NA's. So we'll put a big two to multiply the NA. So now we've got two NA's on each side, but we may need to come back to that one. Now we need to get the O's correct. Now we can't simply put a little two on the end of Na2O. We can't change the small numbers. All we can do is put big numbers in front. So we need to put a big two in front, which now gives us two oxygens. But unfortunately, we had got two NAs and now we've multiplied it by two. So we've now got four NAs. That means we've got to go back to the left hand side and change that two to a four. So let's check if we're correct. We've got four NAs on each side and we've now got two O's on each side. So that one is balanced. Let's look at a final example. So we've got to start with two FEs on the left, one FE on the right three O's on the left, two O's on the right, one C on the left, one C on the right. Now this is a common problem. We've got three O's on the left and two on the right. So how do we get them balanced? Well, the magic number is six. That's the lowest common denominator. So we'll try and make it up so that we've got six O's on each side. So the first thing we'll do is times this by two, and that will give us six O's on the left. That means we need to multiply CO2 by 3 to give us 6 O's on the right. So the oxygens are correct. Now let's work our way through the others. Now because we've multiplied Fe2O3 by 2, that means we've now got 4 Fe's on the left. So to get 4 on the right, we put a big 4 in front of the Fe, and now we've got 4 Fe's on the left. Now by placing the 3 in front of CO2, that means we've now got three C's on the right. So to get three C's on the left, we put a big three in front of the C. So hopefully this should be okay. We've got four FE's on each side, six O's on each side, and three C's on each side. That one's now balanced. So here's a practice question to have a go at. Pause the video, have a go on a piece of scrap paper, and then resume the video to check your answer. So to start with, we've got two O's on each side and we've got, sorry, two H's on each side and we've got two O's on the left and one O on the right. So to balance this one, the first thing we need to do is get the O's correct. So we've got to put a two in front of the H2O. So now we've got two O's. Now that also means we've now got four H's because we had two and we've now multiplied it by two to get four. So to get four H's on the left to get it to balance, we need to put a big two in front of H2. So let's do a final check. We've got four H's on each side, two O's on each side. That one's balanced. Well done if you got that right. Practice question two. Once again, pause the video, have a go and then check back in. 
So we've got one TI on each side, four CLs on the left, one on the right, two H's on the left, one on the right, and one O on the left, two on the right. So let's start by getting the CLs correct. So we've got four on the left, we need four on the right. So we've got to times HCL by four. So now we've got the correct number of CLs. Now that also means we've got four H's on the right. So we need four H's on the left. So we need to put a big two in front of H2O to give us our four H's. And now we'll check how many O's we've got on the left. That's now two. And that looks like it's balanced. Let's do a final check. One TI on each side, four CLs on each side, four H's on each side, and two O's on each side. That one is now balanced. On this final question, have a go, pause the video, and then recheck in to see how you got on. So to start with, we've got three C's on the left, one C on the right, eight H's on the left, two on the right, two O's on the left, and three on the right altogether, because we've got two O's in CO2 and one in H2O. So the starting point, let's get the C's correct. We need to put a big three in front of the CO2 to give us three C's on the right. But now that's changed the oxygens. We'll come back to those in a minute. Let's look at the H's. We've got eight H's on the left and only two on the right. So the only thing we can do is times H2O by four, putting a big number in front of it. So that now gives us our eight H's on the right. And then if we add up all together the O's on the right, we've got six in the CO2 because we've times it by three and we've got four in the H2O. So six add four is 10 altogether on the right. So to get 10 O's on the right, we need to times the O2 by five to get 10. So let's check if that's correct. We've got three C's on each side, eight H's on each side and 10 O's on each side.